Small towns dot the rolling rural landscape. Antique shops, historic homes, and farm after farm make up the so-called quiet corner of Connecticut. At just over an hour's drive, it's not even a full tank from Boston. Sights along scenic byway 169 invite visitors to slow down and take in the beauty. Or for early risers with an appetite for adventure, take off for a truly spectacular view. To do that, meet Maggie Weems and the team from Connecticut Voyager Balloons at sunrise on this day launching from the town of Pomfret. Customers will enjoy the inflation process and will watch the fascinating process of how a hot air balloon actually starts kind of parallel to the ground and with a propane infusions gradually comes up into upright position and then they take off. Fall foliage was amazing. We went up to what height? Uh, 3,000 feet. Yeah, and then we could see Boston, we could see the ocean, we could see the New York border. Mangesh and Manjiri Fadnes planned this flight to celebrate their anniversary. One of the things that surprised them, taking off without knowing where the pilot would land. It depends on the wind. That was interesting. I uh, did not realize that, you know, you just sort of like wait until the conditions are just right. That's standard in ballooning. Luckily here, neighbors are used to sightseeing strangers dropping in and as a thank you are invited to take part in the champagne celebration that always follows. Cheers for a beautiful day. One of the Pomfret Farms ballooners might very well float over belongs to Linda Rich. She started off as a dairy farmer in 1977 and soon after started a family ice cream business. We didn't think many people would come, but we have a lot of customers. We've had babies that were, I don't know if they were conceived here, but anyway, they've been here for 22 years, so yes. Everything is homemade. From the waffle cones to the one-of-a-kind flavors they scoop. Only here can you get chipmunk tracks or Ayrshire chip. They even take suggestions. People send in their recipes and then we have people vote on it. And whoever wins, we make that recipe. One scoop of the Guernsey cookie in a sugar cone, please. Oh. That's coffee Oreo. It's all about fun names here, which brings me to a question Linda gets a lot about the name of her farm. I have to admit, being ice cream, I asked Linda if it's We Lick It, and she said, no, it's We Like It. And I love it. What Linda says she likes most is educating people. Along with the ice cream, she runs a beef farm now instead of dairy. She says the animals by the ice cream stand are here to help teach people about agriculture. One lady said, oh, that's a goat. And I'm like, oh, God, good, good job. And she said, but it started out as a sheep. And when they shear it, it turns into a goat. I went up to the house and had a margarita. I'm like, this is we sell them in our marketplace and we supply them. Teaching visitors about farm life is also a passion for the owners of Little Dipper Farm, just five miles away in Brooklyn, Connecticut. It's an iconic property. And owning it is, you know, it's surreal. Lori Corvo and her wife Venus bought the property in 2021. It has an amazing history. This farm was first purchased by the family we bought it from in 1943, and they started a restaurant that operated for 55 years. Chef Brian Pasco now owns and runs the restaurant here, Chef's Table at Little Dipper Farm. He gets to create with all kinds of fresh products, like honey, thanks to Tom Bacon. He manages the bees here. The honey goes into numerous dishes that the chef makes. And the beeswax uh, was made into candles and a face cream. Those are sold in the farm store on site, as are Little Dipper grown mushrooms. This is Sarah Mooney, our farm director at Little Dipper Farm. One of the more interesting educational events was mushroom inoculation. Introducing mushroom spores into these logs. Most commercial mushroom growers grow inside, but I think it's something really special and magical about doing this, you know, in the woods, by the pond. There's nothing better than, oh, I gotta go harvest mushrooms. Yay! Those very mushrooms are going into Chef Pasco's warm carrot and mushroom salad. He's also preparing the customer favorite duck fat roasted potatoes. Out here, everyone eats dairy and gluten and potatoes. It's awesome. You don't often meet a chef so quick with a chuckle. It seems that's what true happiness brings. 
So you've worked in big cities, San Francisco, Boston, now you're in farmland. I <laughs> know, it's nuts. So like, I, we make a joke around here, it's like city Brian, because like things just happen here and I'm like amazed by it. You can almost taste the joy in his dishes, which he hopes diners find delicious and approachable. I want people to feel comfortable here. That's like my number one goal. And when I get that back from the guest, it feels so right. The same can be said for this setting. It just feels right. It is magical. I mean, the people that are coming make it special for us because we wanted to build a community in a place where people would want to come and want to have amazing food and incredible experiences and we wanted to bring people together and this is the place that we thought we could do that.